The tragic story of Jack Elam behind a crazy-eyed heavy. Jack Elam was an American actor known for his excellent portrayal of villain characters in Western films and his comedic roles. Elam lived for 82 years and worked as an actor for 51 years. He died on October 20, 2003. Jack Elam became an iconic villain. Therefore, this is my homage to the wall-eyed actor who had a gentle spirit and could play any part he was given to perfection, whether it be the embodiment of evil or of buffoonery. He was born November in Miami, Arizona on 14, 1918, to Millard Elam and Alice Amelia Kirby. His mother died in 1924 and Elam's father remarried in 1930 and young Jack lived with his father, his stepmother, Flossie and his older sister, Mildred in Gila County. As a child, Jack worked picking cotton. As far as his blind left eye, it was damaged by a pencil thrown during a Boy Scout meeting. It was either the result of an accident or the result of an argument with another boy who threw the pencil at him. It all depends from where the information comes. Elam went to Santa Monica Junior College and earned a degree in accounting. At some time, Elam managed the Bel Air Hotel but that must have been before he worked full-time as an accountant. He parlayed his way into his first acting job by trading his accounting services for a part in a movie. One of his clients was Samuel Goldwyn and when a movie director friend was having trouble getting financing for a movie he wanted to make, Elam said that he would help secure the financing for a part in the film. Elam actually wanted to leave accounting because the job put a strain on his good eye and he was warned that he may lose his sight in his right eye if he continued. Although Elam is most associated with westerns, he actually began as a staple in film noir, such as Kansas City Confidential, and played thugs and criminals and became a favorite of auteurs such as Fritz Lang, Sam Peckinpah and Don Seigel. His slim build and unremarkable looks were perfect for the medium and his eye was often doctored with makeup or with tricky camera work and therefore, it is not obvious in his early work. One of his first movies was a 1949 exploitation film, She Shoulda Said No, about a woman who becomes addicted to marijuana after saying yes to it. The movie capitalized on Robert Mitchum's scandalous arrest and conviction for marijuana possession. But besides that movie, one of the oddest movies and strangest roles that Elam played was in The Girl in Lover S. Lane. Elam portrayed a homosexual hobo and the movie became a cult favorite after it was panned by Mystery Science Theater 3000, a.k.a. MST3K. Elam went from B-movies and working with unknowns to films with the likes of Clark Gable and Key to the City where Elam played a city council member. That year, 1950, became a busy one for Elam. He had parts in The Sundowners, The Texan Meets Calamity Jane, High Lonesome where he played a cowpoke and a ticket to Tomahawk with John Drew Barrymore. In that film, both Elam and a Marilyn Monroe were uncredited. In 1955, Elam was cast as a singing Arab in Kismet and in the late 1950s, he became a household face. Elam was so popular that he was profiled on person to person with Edward R. Murrow. In the show, Elam showed his collection, oddly enough, of porcelain elephants. With fatter paychecks, Elam became fatter too, putting on so much weight that he could be cast as Fatso Nagel in Babyface Nelson. But Elam began to take advantage of his unique looks and that earned him many more roles. In the 60s, after dropping weight, Elam appeared in episodes of The Rebel, The Rifleman, The Untouchables, Ben Casey, The Twilight Zone and a plethora of others sometimes credited, sometimes not. He played in three episodes of Bonanza alone. His last role was playing the cook in the television movie, Bonanza, Under Attack. Two of Elam's most popular movies were 1969's Support Your Local Sheriff and 1971's Support Your Local Gunfighter, both with James Garner and both were comedic parts. The fans loved him but even before that time, Elam was known as the Western guy. He appeared in The Rare Breed, 66, The Night of the Grizzly, 66, The Way West, 67, The Last Challenge, 67, and Fire Creek, 68, among others. In the 1963 movie, Four for Texas with Frank Sinatra, Elam, as a villain, is killed in the opening minute. But the movie with the oddest casting in which he acted was The Last Rebel with Joe Namath in 1971. Elam, the actor with the out-of-kilter eye and who had once been described as a combination of Neil Young and Marty Feldman, 
was inducted into the Cowboy Hall of Fame in 1994. Elam retired to Oregon and died of heart failure in October of 2003. He was survived by his wife, Margaret, their daughter, Jacqueline, and a daughter and son from his first marriage, Jerry and Scott. One thing that people remember about Elam is that he was lucky, not just in life but in games. He always won at gambling and would clean up when he played with other actors or crew on a movie set. But Elam's iconic image will not and cannot ever be duplicated. He was highly respected by the others in his craft, well-liked and well-loved. Rest in peace Jack Elam, goodbye legend.